Hello and welcome to another installment of Slam and Synapsis right here on Facebook and YouTube. First off, I want to thank the guys at PWInsider.com for airing my last segment on their sister site, PWInsiderExtra.com. Um, I gained a lot of views and I do want to thank you for viewing and giving me your time. Um, if you are viewing me on YouTube, there's a subscribe button someplace up here click on that keep up to date um, if you are viewing me through a phone or other things and it gives you a subscribe option someplace give me go ahead and subscribe that way as well be more than happy to have you along for the ride um, this segment's going to be the history of WrestleMania part three um, once again this was a suggestion by one of my viewers out there named Travis Berry um, if, like I say, if you have any topics, suggestions, or anything that you want me to discuss, feel free to let me know. I'd be more than happy to do that for you. So without further ado, here we go. WrestleMania 4, uh, what led into it was an event called the Main Event. Um, it was Andre the Giant against Hulk Hogan, in which Andre, if Andre the Giant won the title, he said he would sell the title to DiBiase. Now, thanks to a fake referee, in other words, one of the twin Hepner brothers, um, Andre would win the match and wind up selling the title to DiBiase. Now, sometime over the weekend, DiBiase was billed as the world champion, but based on the findings of the match, they vacated the title, which led to the tournament at WrestleMania 4. Now thing that was interesting about this is there were two matches that were switched from the time they originally aired the bracketing to to what it became. Now they didn't mention it, they didn't say anything, didn't draw any attention to it, they just made the switch and went from there. You would see matches like Jim Duggan and DiBiase, you would see Mor Don Morocco take on Dino Bravo, Ricky Steamboat take on Greg Valentine, Randy Savage against Butch Reed, Bam Bam Bigelow against the One Man Gang, Jake Roberts versus Rick Root, and you'd also see Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant as they got a second round by. Matches that were changed were Jim Duggan and Deep Ted DiBiase and Jake Roberts against Rick Root. Now, what was originally supposed to happen is DiBiase was supposed to win this tournament, but we'll go into that later. Um, so, the matches that took place aside from the tournament you'd see a battle royal in which it came down to Bad News Brown and Bret Hart um, they were the last two men in the ring they were both heels Bret Hart decided oh we could share the trophy because there was a trophy for winning this and Bad News Brown set him up hit him with the ghetto blaster throw him over the ring eliminating him winning the tournament winning the battle royal but what happened is afterwards Bret Hart came back in and since destroyed the trophy Chase Bad News Brown off, and this would be this would be Bret Hart's face turn. From there, went on to went on to even greater fame and fortune. There, um, you would also see Warrior making his WrestleMania debut against Hercules, as he defeated him. Um, you also saw British Beefcake take on the Honky Tonk Man for the Intercontinental Championship. Honky Tonk, basically Brutus Beefcake won that match by disqualification. Um, the Islanders and Bobby Heenan defeated the British Bulldogs and Coco Beware. And Demolition defeated Strike Force, Rick Martel and Tito Santana, and became the new World Tag Team Champions at that time. Um, now we're going to get into the tournament itself <clears throat> in terms of who won. Jim Duggan. Actually, correction, Ted DiBiase would defeat Jim Duggan. Don Morocco defeats Dino Bravo. By disqualification, Greg Valentine defeated Ricky Steamboat. Randy Savage versus Butch Reed. If it looks like I'm reading stuff, I'm looking over notes here. Um, One Man Gang defeated Bam Bam Bigelow. And Jake Roberts and Rick Rude went to a draw. In the quarterfinal match, Hogan and Andre went to a double disqualification. Ted DiBiase defeated Don Morocco. Randy Savage defeated Greg Valentine. The one-man gang received a bye based on the draw in the Roberts Rude match. The semifinals, Ted DiBiase gained a bye. Randy Savage defeated the one-man gang. And in the finals, um, Randy Savage would become the world heavyweight champion by beating Ted DiBiase in the main event. <clears throat> but yeah, like I said, like I was saying. Ted DiBiase was supposed to go away the champion, but supposedly Honky... This way the story goes is Honky Tonk Man was having an issue like dropping the title because I think dropping the title so 
he didn't want to drop it to Savage, so Savage was put in the tournament, and basically to assuage him, they gave him the championship. Kind of a sad, it's kind of a sad thing that T D that Ted DiBiase didn't actually win the title, because I think they could have done really big things with him. Um, didn't really, didn't really bring out the celebrities much. Yeah, Gladys Knight singing "America the Beautiful." Vanna White was there, but and Bob Uecker, but aside from that, there wasn't many others there. Um, this was the only WrestleMania that had six, that had the most matches on it, 16 matches overall, more than any other WrestleMania, and it was kind of interesting. It was also the first four-hour WrestleMania as well, so it made history in a lot of ways. So now that we've gotten WrestleMania four out the way. We're going to jump over into WrestleMania 5, one being held at the Trump Plaza in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, what led into this match it was Hulk Hogan against Randy Savage for the Heavyweight Championship. What led into this is that Hogan and Savage would become a team called the Mega Powers, and eventually they started like building up to this because of with Elizabeth giving Hogan the same kind of attention that she was giving Savage. Savage was kind of jealous and during a match with the Twin Towers, Elizabeth wound up getting injured and what happened is Hulk Hogan brought Elizabeth to the to the locker room to get her out the way, leaving Savage in the ring with the Twin Towers. Um, anyhow, basically what happened is is Hogan eventually came back Savage wind up basically leaving the ring taking off Hogan would win the match despite all that and then would Savage would then attack Hogan in the basically medical area when he went back to check on Elizabeth so that led to WrestleMania 5 also there was a super pose down between Rick Root and the Ultimate Warrior Ultimate Warrior was the Intercontinental Champion at the time, which led into their Intercontinental title match at this event. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, matches that you would see on this would be Hercules, he defeated King Haku, Twin Towers defeated the Rockers, Brutus Beefcake and DiBiase went to a double countout, Bushwhackers defeated the Fabulous Rougeau Brothers. Mr. Perfect, God rest his soul, defeated the Blue Blazer, Owen Hart, God rest his soul. Demolition defeated the Powers of Pain and Mr. Fuji. That was a handicap match. What happened prior to this is Mr. Fuji was a manager to Demolition. And basically in a match against the Powers of Pain, Fuji turned on Demolition and joined the Powers of Pain. And that's how he became manager. Um, Dino Bravo defeated Ronnie Garvin. The Brain Busters defeated... Rick Martel and Tito Santana. Now what happened in that match is it would get to a point to where to where Martel decide was accidentally hit during the match. Martel left the ring incensed. Um, Santana wound up getting defeated. Martel turned heel at that. So basically would become the model, the model Rick Martel with his arrogance. So that was his career from there. Um, there was a segment between Piper, Roddy Piper, and Morton Downey Jr. Morton Downey Jr. at the time, God rest his soul too, was a talk show host, very abrasive talk show host, had an attitude. He was the Maury Povich, Jerry Springer of his time, but he was a little bit more real. Um, before the pit, Brother Love, Bruce Pritchard came out, came pretty much interviewed himself mocking Piper in the process. Piper came down, destroyed Brother Love, Brother Love left and basically was down to Morton Downey Jr. and Roddy Roddy Piper. Now during this entire thing Morton Downey kept blowing smoke, cigarette smoke into Piper's face which Piper said something along the lines, don't blow smoke in my face. Um, he would do it one more time and while Downey was off talking to the crowd. Suppose somehow there was a fire extinguisher under a stool. Whitey Piper wound up getting that, sprayed Morton Downey and chased him off and Piper got the big hurrah and there you go. 
<clears throat> the next match was Jake Roberts against Andre the Giant. Big John Studd as the special guest referee. Um, during that match, um, Jake, Jake Roberts defeated Andre the Giant by disqualification. Didn't see Andre the Giant lose many matches at that time. But in this case, he was a heel. And so Andre the Giant wound up hitting the referee. Wound up getting disqualified for that, so that's how he lost. The Hart Foundation defeated Rhythm and Blues. That's Greg Valentine and Jim... Jim... Ugh, try again. Greg Valentine and the Honky Tonk Man. Um, you would also see Rick Rude defeat the Ultimate Warrior for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, basically what happened is Rude was outside the ring. Warrior went to get him, suplexed him into the ring, and Bobby Heenan, Rick Rude's manager, would kind of like hold Warrior's legs down. Rick Rude would get the win, and that would be the Ultimate Warrior's first pinfall loss in the Federation. Um, you'd also see Jim Duggan and Bad News Brown go to a double disqualification. The Red Rooster, Terry Taylor. I don't know what they were thinking about throwing that Red Rooster tag on Terry Taylor, but he was definitely better than what they booked him to be in WWF. Um, he defeated Bobby Heenan, and in the main event, of course, was the World Heavyweight Championship as Hulk Hogan defeated Savage for the title. <clears throat> um, shortly after this, there would be a No Holds Barred movie and match with Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake taking on Zeus and Randy Savage. We may go over that at another time and another segment. For now, it's not going to fit here, but we may, f there's a lot of things we may get into. That may be one of them. Um, so that runs up this segment, this part three of the history of WrestleMania. Um, if you want to drop me an email, feel free to do so. You're going to see a graphic someplace on the bottom of the screen here with information I'll do that or like say if you want to drop me a comment feel free to do so as well the next history of Wrestlemania part 4 we will tackle Wrestlemania 6 and Wrestlemania 7 I think we're getting to a point now to where we could tackle to a segment probably 3 depending on how things go and how time permits um, may do another segment before that so keep it tuned right here just to see what goes on. Uh, what else can I say? Like I said, I do want to thank you guys for viewing me. I do want to thank most of you who decided to come back after my last segment to check me out. If you do want to check my other videos, just check out the channel listing for previous ones. You can see how far I've come since my originating days. Uh, so what else? <clears throat> I guess that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Can't think of anything else having a block right now, so without going any further, this is Slam and Sampsis. My name is Albert Gurrier. I do want to thank you for viewing. Have a good day. Good night, everybody.